So, welcome back to this um, tutorial, but not tutorial, but hints and tips and advice and things like that, and just follow along and, and play through, <laughs> general playthrough uh, of JTS, uh, sorry, WDS, Russia. Where we left it the last time, we'd just taken the town, um, and I've left it exactly where it was, and literally going to press the next turn button because we're interested to see why the Russians are actually coming to that bridge. Are they counterattacking or not? So, what's actually happening? Bringing a lot of their troops back. Are they making space? Hmm, interesting. What's quite good with cavalry is they are, or oh, the arch nemesis, um, especially light cav, uh, well, all cav, um, of skirmishers. And if they bring all those skirmishers back and don't put them back with their parent unit, potentially we could pick them off hex by hex with a cavalry. Right. So that's where we're at. Now, those dragoons, let's go with that because they're a juicy target. They're still disordered. And. Whilst I moved uh, last time, I, um, I discussed about facings for cavalry and planning your cavalry charges and everything. They're going to lose out. That, that was fine, but they could have equally moved over here, for example, and um, the Dragoons, and they would have been in play. Now, again, they might be a little bit far for, for all these units, and they're still disordered. Let's bring PA up and put them in to try and sort them out. Um, what have we got here? They were going to go for supply, and do you know what? They, and they are going to go for supply. They're going to charge across the open ground, and I lose my movement points. I knew that would happen about halfway through that charge. Never mind. Uh, you live and you learn. Uh, we've got some troops in column there, 600. They are um, probably C rated, possibly B rated. So that, whilst they're in column, I'm not going to go against with them with my Hussars. I'm going to leave that there. It'd be nice to push them into square because then the infantry can deal with them a little bit better. Speaking of which, the infantry. So, we've pushed them out of the town. They seem to be retreating. So I can start to push my infantry forward a little bit and capture some supply. Which is never a bad thing. Now, I'll bring my infantry... No, they're going to protect that supply. Yeah, why not? Um, bring these troops out and I'm going to put these guys into line formation. So we talked about column earlier but now we've got to talk about another formation which is line. Now line is your say attacking, no, that's not quite the right term. Line is your best defensive stroke firepower if that makes sense I'm making a bit of a meal of it. So when your troops are in line three deep or two deep with some nations, you bring as many muskets to bear to the front of, of your frontage to whatever enemy is in front of you. So you get the best amount of firepower. The, um, column, you don't get that. Square, you don't get that. You will get the most, and it's a, a pretty common formation, when everybody, all your troops are in line, you're going to get the most firepower. So you've got some troops, say, approaching you in column formation. When they get within range, uh, a well-drilled... Um, unit will put out a tremendous amount of musket fire, savaging the ranks of that column, and then eventually, hopefully, you've decimated enough then to possibly either they abort the attack, or uh, if you're in fairly good order, you can attach bayonets and charge them and push them back. That's the idea in principle. However, again, there are limitations or weaknesses to having a line formation. So whilst it gives you the most amount of firepower, it is vulnerable on the flanks and the rear, so you do have to consider where that where you actually go in line. Best of firepower, but can be a little bit vulnerable to the flanks, um, especially to cavalry, for example, or even the other infantry in column and things like that um, can be a little bit daunting. Okay, right. In terms of heavy cavalry down here, lancers are going to push forward, and they have not noticed anything. This is very good, and. Big old, I forgot to do these, that's my bad, so you're going to have to just sit and watch whilst I break them down into squadrons. No problem at all. Um, that's another squadron, so they can go up there. And I'm, li I'm literally going to split them off. Now I want Brune and uh, Walter. You will go somewhere in the middle uh, for your command range. 
break these down quite quickly. And you break them down the same way as you would infantry and skirmishers. The, uh, it's the same button press, I suppose, the same option on the menu. Um, we've got there, and then we've got squadron, so you hit it there. Um, so it looks like you, you've got even more cavalry than they actually have, but it's just that they're sort of split up a little bit more than uh, anything else. Squadron. Okay, good. So it might look a little bit piecemeal, and people will probably take a bit more time position them exactly and things like that. But it's a bit, I'm just sort of going towards a staging area. So they're going to have to um, cross over that road, for example. They're going to come up and around that little wood. But they're all going to meet in nice, beautiful order somewhere down here. That's the plan, anyway. Um, Carabinier, break them down. Um, there we go. Okay, break them down. Sorry, it's a bit, a bit boring, but it's a necessity, in my opinion. And that looks like some lances following up. I'll tell you what, those lances might actually divert. I'll try and scout down here, just to be sure, because I've got quite an open right flank in this sort of area here. And that's quite a nice area to hide quite a lot of troops, Cossacks. Um, Break them down. Horse artillery coming up. This horse artillery, bring that down because that, that, that was there to create that gap in the line, if you remember the last time. And um, we'll break them down into two final squadrons. And to save you banging your head against the wall watching me do that, I'm going to leave this order of march as it is um, and break them down with you not watching. This cavalry over this side, it must be sorting itself out by now. It is, so slowly bring them up to the crest of the hill. Um, you're okay, you can bring them up here. We've got the SARS fifth plan. Bring that over. Um, and then we're left, I suppose, with what we're going to do in the town. Finish off before I forget. my line troops out to the front. Artillery. Yep. Ah. Pop shot. Um, and we've got some more to artillery back here. We'll bring that up. Unlimber it in the town. And again, fire on the infantry on the other side of the marshes. Bring troops out. They do need to hopefully try and sort themselves out a little bit. Bring you through. Ney and Murat can go in the town centre. Portuguese troops up and around. And Bruni's guys can just come in straight in the middle. Bring some more supply. And slowly but surely, I should suppose I ought to be bringing that cavalry into some sort of march order on the roads because they are going to break out or, or come through when that town's clear. Uh, if I can use them, I will. Right. Um, I'll bring them out. Yeah, I think I'm fairly happy with that at the moment. Maybe switch my cavalry a little bit so that they can maybe charge the next turn. There. Oh, I feel like I'm going to have to support Yeah, I'm going to have to bring some support I think with the Polish Lancers. Bring some artillery support would be quite nice. Uh, who can we see though? Nobody. Nobody of note anyway, that's fine. Would have been better there, Poss possibly. But we'll leave them as they are. The SARS will move down slightly into a bit of a better position. Place them that way. Place them that way. And face them that way, just in case. So they're sort of covering that side, that side, and so forth, like we discussed before. 
Shasta with Cheval, you could come down here. Scouts are all good on the north, but they haven't seen anything. Nope. Nope. Good. So it's nice and clear up there. Business as usual in the center. Bring the Hussars forward slightly. I guess, bring that forward a little bit. See how the Russians respond. See, I don't know if they're counter-attacking. I don't know if they're retreating. I don't know if they're just saying, oh my, they're okay. So they've gone into square now. And square, there we go. So square, here we go, is another formation. And it's pretty much the only formation, if I go and find the actual square bit, the only formation that is almost impregnable to cavalry attacks. It offers you all-round protection against cavalry, not so much against infantry, but we'll come to that. And there were only a handful of occasions in the whole of the Napoleonic Wars, 20 odd years or whatever, that squares were broken by cavalry. So it is your default. There's a lot of cavalry out there. Time it right, and we should be able to go into a square formation. Sometimes you, uh, the game calls it a square, but invariably other nations had battalion mass and things like that. But they had some form of a square to protect um, against cavalry. So the cavalry will come and you'll be able to hopefully hold your own and beat them off. <clears throat> However, again, similar to column, not so good uh, against um, artillery. And then also we have not so good against infantry as well, especially infantry coming on in column. They should be able to sort of mangle a square fairly straightforward. So square is your deep or should be your default protection against cavalry, but it's not so good, not as bad, um, against infantry as a column for uh, uh, as a line um, and it's not as bad as a column for artillery so it's a bit of a an in-between one but it's the one you go to for cavalry for sure so they've gone into square so there's not a lot I can do with my cavalry there I'm not stupid enough to charge a square especially with light, tr uh, light cavalry but what we do have is dragoons which have r routed now we haven't done anything but there is a movement threat disorder going on in the background where the, the algorithm, the coding, is having a look and thinking that's a dangerous situation and these boys here have just decided no, I'm not having any of that. So we've got a lovely opportunity that we've created here with a lot of fresh, uh, we won't include them, but we've got a lot of fresh leaded class A uh, lancers against those Russian dragoons. This should be an easy win. So we're going to charge with every, all the um, Polish cavalry we can, the lancers that we can. Advantage attacker is up, and Pure is going to come in as well. Probably stacking limitations, I thought it might. 15 attack, yeah, I, I'll take that. They could continue, however, there's still a lot of dragoons there, and it's uphill. What, or what the hell? So, whilst most melees let's say you you can only attack once and, and that's it with a successful charge you have the option to continue but it will not be there are limitations to it there won't be as successful potentially as your first and second uh, or your first charge you might even have a third attempt on it a cavalry charge um you've, you've seen photos pictures or oh, photos <laughs> uh, paintings i should say of cavalry charges and you know they were chaotic imagine a couple of thousand of horses even a couple of hundred horses coming towards you so the momentum is still here and i i guess because of the leader there and it's a video no prediction ah oh, stacking limitations let's see if it's a bit more savvy I, I shouldn't have charged with all of them but never mind we'll see how we go 28 and 26 they still have a moment no prediction, however, who's 9035? We'll go with two units from here for the stacking, and we get advantage attacker. So that was quite nice. 
that was in three stages that charge, but it was almost a, a textbook charge. Well, luckily enough, the algorithm said that uh, those dragoons were routed, so they were a nice juicy target. We'd lined up good cavalry uh, to deal with that situation with the leader, uh, and a couple of turns before we, we looked at the facings for it, so we sort of preempted. So it took, what, two or three, maybe even more if we can consider coming back here, three, four, five turns to plan that charge, and then we got lucky with it. Um, but that's what I'm saying about chart. You will get much, 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 much more benefit out of your cavalry if you're careful with it, you plan with it, use the right cavalry for the right job, um, than you would just piecemeal throwing cavalry in. Over here, though, I'm not going to go against those squares, but what we are going to do, and they're disordered, um, is use these Polish Lancers if they have enough movement. Board, I'm um, oh, bugger. Okay, so that's what's known as a wrong movement. <laughs> Um, and that's my fault. I, I, I attempted to get them here, pressed on the wrong hex, and I'm just going to have to deal with that now, throw them away. That's completely my fault, being a poor commander, but sometimes that happens. What have we got here? Now, I just wonder if this artillery wouldn't be better suited down here somewhere. I think it would. Yeah, because it's got eyes on. I'm limb with them next time. It's a horse artillery, so we can fire. Uh, and we can fire. Do we say on that square? Yes, on that square. Right, Chasseur Cheval over here. I'm going to line these guys up for a potential charge, depending on what happens with the Russians. So they're going to occupy this sort of ground over here. I'll sort the facings out the next turn. And you come down here as well. Uh, supply. There we go about them. Right, my cavalry here. See, now, if this was against a human player, I might be a little bit more savvy against my approach here. That They can probably see uh, my cavalry, but I would maybe spend a little bit more time maybe trying to hide the main force or, or what's down here. Um, spend a few more turns maybe going behind this ground here so that it masks their approach all the way and then all of a sudden appear out of nowhere. But to keep the video a little bit shorter, to give you a little bit of action rather than just sort of marching there. I certainly, just looking at that and thinking that now, on a game with more turns, I would have considered marching everybody here because that looks like a nice ground where I can hide most of my forces and then pop out on that moment. But it's against the AI. I'm not as scared of the AI as I am against other players. So Lancers are scouting there. My Karassier are going to come up this road. Um, group up here, up here, horse artillery over here, horse artillery over here. Uh, you still got a bit of movement there. As have you. Uh, Carabinier, 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 and some final Carassier, Carassier, and artillery. Okay. Lancers back on the road, and they're going to scout down towards this area here. That's a good uh, example of pathfinding. That pathfinding there, to me, it said, right, you're on the um, on the track, on the path. It, I wanted to continue on the path going down here, but it saw a better route on the actual road itself then. So, and it thought, well, you get more for your move, more money, more for your money's worth on the road than you would there. Not too bad, but sometimes it does it and it could put you in the marsh, for example, and it's just a little bit infuriating. But as I said, Rich and the boys are having a look at it behind the scenes if there is a way to improve it. So bear with them. They're the, the, one of the only collectives, game c companies, whatever you want to call them, that actually listen to fans and, and do they do listen and, and do put suggestions in where possible. You know, there's limitations of the engine and things like that. However, they, they really are one of the only developers I think that are almost face to face and I know not quite face to face but um, on that sort of uh, in that nature they listen they, they have a lot of dialogue they're constantly updating things as well so you know credit where credit's due in my opinion uh, climbing on the march down here that artillery I'm going to put it on the back on the end of this march it should have been with a fourth class A but they've been help, uh, pushed in or pulled into the remain. We've got two or three batteries up here anyway. Cavalry here, I dare say, can inch 
forward because I don't think there's any threat for them around here. Not now the heavies are there. We'd have seen anything by now anyway. So I, even though they're not quite all um, back into formation, etc., there's still disorderment there. There's no threat. There's no danger. So I am going to inch them forward uh, in the town then. Right. Spread out a line formation. Uh, this order, never mind. Um, I'm going to put all my troop or some troops in front of the town into line formation just because I think they are after a sneaky counter attack. Who knows where the AI is? Um, we've got some troops we can fire on as we have here. No, they're in line. You are disordered, however, you can come back in. Bit of a reserve, bring my supplies back a little bit. Um, put you back here, and there we go. And Portuguese troops sweeping around the north. There. And what I'll do next time when I've got a bit more troop, or a few more troops up, is, is have another skirmish line. In, in front of the town in those marshes to deal with those enemy skirmishers give me a chance to sort of get the perfect position react to what they're doing so that skirmish line is going to be something like that I think they're too disrupted but a, a human player would also have a skirmish line there um, and would be a bit of toing and froing to see what was uh, what was actually happening so that would that would be what would be happening in real life in real life well yeah and against a human player should say with skirmishers, that's how you use them. Uh, we've got supplies, make sure everyone's in supply. Ney and Morat. And I guess now it's just a case of spreading out my reserves. Now a lot of people might be going crazy. Oh, you, everything's disordered. Why are you going through the town like that? A, because to save a little bit of time for everyone. And B, I'm not overly worried that I, I'm in a position where I can't afford to let them sit a turn or two, sort leaders out of command, what have you, and get them back into order. So, I mean, I I could go through hex by hex, making sure... Call me lazy, for want of a better word. It, just, it does speed things up just a wee bit. Cavalry, they're in marching order now, so we can slowly bring them forward to cross over when the time comes. Cavalry in the north is fine. Over to the Russians. Very embarrassed about them Polish Lancers here. I feel bad. Mistakes happen. Oh well. Dragoons, have they sorted themselves out? No leader. There we go. Okay, can't charge on them. However, however, most chasseur cheval on their line of retreat. Heavies might catch up with them. And it looks like the Russians are spreading out. See what I mean? I think I think they're counter attacking, but I also think sometimes they're retreating. Anyway, uh, it's all about getting my position tenable. So as I said, getting a skirmish line out, for example, in the marshes. Line troops here. So we get a tremendous amount of firepower with those line, especially with those troops coming. That's kind of the example I gave, coming in the column, depending what the dice say. 51 men. I'd take that all day long. And what else have we got? Disordered, disordered, and disordered. That is my fault, as I mentioned. But I could I overrode that. You move that away. There is a road, but there will... Good. And then, have we got enough movement point? Yes. So, give them another volley. Another 28 men. I'd take that. Um, bring those captured supplies down a little bit. Bring my skirmish line out. I'm going to have to start breaking off skirmishes from my newly arrived troops as well. And what have we got as a target? Lovely. Love it when troops bunch up. That's kind of why. So you get a bonus depending on what optional rule. Okay, they just had a leader, but let's go. 
not so much skirmishes, probably won't find an example now. However, let's say you've got a couple of hundred troops all in column, um, two units. You're going to have a, an advantage firing cannon into or firing your artillery into them, um, and it's going to spread them out between both units. That's why I tend to single stack some units and things like that because you don't want that net effect um, on all of the units within that hex. Now, what else have we got here? Skirmish line forward. Um, break off some skirmishes. You sorted yourself out. You can now go into line. I don't like to put line in a town. You, you can. We house rule it, to be honest. Uh, and, and A offers an unrealistic amount of firepower for a town hex, in my opinion. And troops just wouldn't do it, unless it's a big open square or something. But that's quite rare, especially in Russian villages and things like that. So I tend not to do it. You can. The game allows it. That's fine. It's just I tend not to do it. Uh, we've got some artillery coming up and we've got to decide where we want to put that. So we've got some artillery in the centre. It would be nice to have some in the sort of southern sector and perhaps up here somewhere. Yeah. And supplies up here. In line. Bring some more supplies in. Slowly but surely bring that cavalry. And what are we going to do with our own cavalry? Well, get those poor lancers away. I mean, they came off of that quite well. A, they, it could have been a lot worse against a human player or on another day. That could have been a lot worse. So we join them back over here. Dragoons, I'm not going to risk that. There's a river there. However, I might follow them up. with a little bit of protection over here just in case because you know they might pop up over the crest hit my lances from behind if I'm not careful horse artillery is now in position but I think that square a square can only move a hex at a time you think you've got that unit has got to literally go lateral um, uh, some of the, the troops have got to go lateral um, it's quite a difficult movement so they can't really move around and quite often you'll find they get disordered so where have we got a line of sight on? Oh, we can still still see them. All right. There you go, boys. Oh. And seven men. There we go. I think it should have been more, but it's the dice. Right. Heavy cavalry. What have we got? Oh, we've got something there. Cavalry are going to go over here. You want to come up here. Go here. Again, I'm not playing with probably the most finesse that I ever have, but it makes it a little bit quicker. So there's something there we're facing. Remember to try and face your cavalry in other directions. Now, if those dragoons stay there, two squadrons of Carassier on blown dragoons, I'll take my chances there. Um, interesting. Company A, artillery, there we go. Now, you, my lancers I wanted on the road. There we go. It looks clear. Where's the road up to where they need to be? Uh, so it's the next one. Oh, it's quite, still quite a long way. And we have to go up to go around for that one. No problem. They might not get involved, I don't know. Or right, maybe right at the end. The Coup de Gras. Chateau Cheval. Mm, Dragoons. Okay. Ordinarily, some of the lightest of the light troops you could have against Dragoons is probably a no-no. But considering what they've been through until now, it's a possibility, I guess, that I could use them to charge. 
the big old squadrons. Oh, we'll see. We'll see on the next turn and what develops. It'd be nicer to get that heavy cavalry in on them. That's for sure. Um, I'm fairly happy so far. I think, for the moment, I am. Those Russians don't know when to quit. quit. So they stayed there. Took two big volleys. BP. Very good. Objective, yeah. Problem is, I keep, because I don't really play for objectives, I keep forgetting. So, uh, I could game it and say, right, I'm just going to send those light troops straight to that victory point. Yeah, I win. But I don't really, I thought that doesn't come into my head. Maybe it should do some more. I'll be a rubbish tournament player, I reckon. But I do like to play historically. Right. Those Dragoons. Yep. Yep. Right. Karasie. They want to get into it. They've been marching and marching. And marching. And finally they get a, a chance. Two squadrons against blown Dragoons. 22-53. Good. Chasseau Cheval have seen this. They shall all sound the charge as well. Um, we'll get them in on the axe as well, just to be sure. Advantage attacker. Poor Dragoons have had a right old meal of it. A uh, right old time of it, I should say. Um, we've broken them down. We'll see what happens with them next time. I'd, I'd say they'd be routed. That means then, potentially, Polish Lancers could come into play. So. Not going to be stupid enough to charge across a river. They're still. Where's my. He's in there. Bring him in, try and sort them out a little bit. Uh, that square. Give that another blast. Have oh, they gone into column, have they? I think they have. No, no, they are still in the square. Hmm. The rest of the poles are going to line themselves up to try, maybe the next turn, deal with these skirmishers. And they like that. As I said, bread and butter, they'll just eat them up, overrun them. You don't even have a fight, really. Um, that's the skirmishers' Achilles' heel, which makes up for them being almost in unbeatable in town and fortified hexes and stuff. But there we go. All right, so other cavalry. This is going to be a case in point. They've seen those Russian skirmishers ahead, charge along the road, heavy cavalry, overrun the Jaeger. No problem at all. And they can continue to charge as well. Um, and the good thing is you won't disrupt. So you can. I, uh, I won't because they'll be sort of a little bit isolated, but you could if you wanted to, um, carry on that charge. Brought some horse artillery up. What can they see? Ah, a battery. An unsighted battery. And Russian batteries tend to be big. Um, 8, 10, 12 guns. No, no problem. Um, very common. So, we need to sort that battery out. Now, attacking artillery has... <laughs> can be tricky. They can be like almost like mini strong points because they're lethal, especially when you get up close. The artillery crew defend them um, like it's their own family. But I think it's a bit more abstract than, than that. A lot of people think, oh, the artillery should have um, defeated them. You've got to think of it as your, your cavalry could overrun, push off the gun crews, absolutely fine. However, the guns themselves haven't been spiked. The crew could come back. Um, there's a lot of space in between the guns and stuff, if you were to look into it a little bit more. So it's not always just, well, they only have X amount of men and I've got this cavalry. It's not as straightforward as that. You've got to look into it a bit deeper. Again, read the manual and it tells you this lovely FAQ section at the end of the user manual where it describes 
exactly the things like this. Well, that should have happened in that. Well, it's because of this. And it's laid out logically. So the FAQ section is really nice for little bits like that. How I do it is you've got to be prepared to sacrifice someone. You know, this is warfare. You can't have everybody force... Um, your force preservation is going to have to take a hit somewhere for the greater good. Now, attacking them on multiple from, from multiple directions is the way forward. So, for example, where is this gun facing? It's actually facing back up here. That, if my cavalry was closer, it would be perfect. That's what you're aiming for. You're aiming to get on the flanks or behind this artillery, and somebody's going to have to draw away that fire, unfortunately. And using good fresh units, go in, charge, or, or fresh infantry, assault, or melee, that artillery. That, that's the way that I personally try to deal with artillery. Now, any, <laughs> any player I play against, that's probably giving my sort of game plan away, but I think that's pretty much universal. They, are a, they can be a tough nut to crack artillery. And it, 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 like I say, at first glance, you think, no, that shouldn't have happened like that. That's just unrealistic. It's not. It's, it's abstracted into the engine. And if you read the FAQ and stuff like that, there's a few sort of different kind of occasions where that might happen. Again, that's my fault. Um, should have separated them on the hex, but not the end of the world. Right, what else have we got? I don't think this cavalry is going to be involved, you know. I don't think they're going to need to be involved. Which, as I mentioned right at the start, or in, in the first video, just because you've got forces doesn't necessarily mean you have to use them. This is a lovely reserve, for example, I don't know, let's say that um, the Russians decided to make a bit of a bigger stand, or it was part of a, a larger campaign game, I'm still going to have those fresh troops, or if there's a load of Russians towards the edge of this map, or something like that, like our victory hex is there as well. Okay, never mind. Um, so it's nice to have a lot of fresh, or some fresh troops, I should say, depending on the situation. I'm going to bring the Hussars into play a little bit as well. Bring them a little bit closer. Basically being surrounded now. Can they break out? Right, in the town itself then. We have line troop or light troops ready for a volley. 74 men, I'll take that. We have 64. I bet you they stand firm, eh? Russians just don't know when to quit back here. They were essentially serfs and, for want of a better word, lowly, low educated, um, and the military, they were pressed into it from a young age and didn't have much of a choice, etc. And they were good troops, man to man, probably as good, as, in, in some cases, if not better than French. Everybody sort of gives puts French on this uh, big pedestal, or the Brits put um, the bloody British on the, on a pedestal as well. But it wasn't always the case. Portuguese, he's done well. What have we got here in terms of a skirmish line? Yep, cross over, give me a bit of space. All right. Hussars can't help themselves. They see something shiny and like a magpie, they will take it. The other thing is with the charge, just because of that momentum of, of, of a couple of hundred horses charging, they can't just about face and turn and get out of that charge. You're sort of committed to it for that turn. So even though I'm up against that square now, I'm prepared to sacrifice a few hussars because I took a few, maybe a hundred Jaeger or whatever it was. Artillery is up. Happy days. Now stacking. If you think about it in this way, my line troops are at the front of that hex and the artillery behind them. So I need to get my artillery to the front of the hex so they're not firing through the back of my infantry. So I have a bit of a stacking. Um, you, you've got to order your stack, essentially. Horse artillery, because when you move in a stack, it's considered you're going to take it's a movement. You've got to be a little bit careful. Horse artillery, remember, can fire and, and move on the same turn. But if it's heavy guns, um, find an example somewhere. But if it's heavy guns, I suggest to move your troop troops behind your artillery, 
and rather than moving your artillery in front of your troops, if that makes sense, because that means your artillery has moved and it won't be able to fire that turn. But if you bring the uh, troops back behind it, the artillery can still fire. So be careful with that one. Little nice little tip there. So for example, my line troops here, I come up to command. I'm going to put them on the bottom of the stack. In other words, behind the artillery. Uh, and then that artillery is at the front, and I can. Oh, I thought I could blast that square. And I have chosen a very bad position for this artillery. Uh, literally, very bad position. I thought I'd get a bit more out of it. Not to worry too much. That would be a nice, easy reposition the next time, then. Um, do we have some artillery up here? And we've got some artillery in the middle as well. That's fired. Uh, what's the line of sight for this artillery before I do anything stupid? Yes, I'll set it up there, those light guns. Okay, fairly happy with that. Turns are getting a little bit longer, not to worry. And what have we got here? Yeah, let's break them off. And the wonderful pathfinding has to put me in all sorts. Marches weren't always, the people got lost. Um, people took wrong turns and wrong directions and stuff. So if you look at it like that, and I like to sort of abstract it a little bit, well, well how can I justify that happening? That's what happened in real life. Okay. I need to sort of, what are we on? What are we on? Turn 12, oh, I've only got six turns. I'm going to have to start pushing through, I think. Yeah, I'm going to start pushing through because I have to get those victories locations. I'm not giving any priority to those victory locations, by the way. Um, I, bigger picture, I have to defeat the Russians here, um, ready for the main army coming, rather than catching victory points and things like that. I mean, if I defeat them, what's to say, after um, a couple of turns after this finishes, that I can't just go on and take all the VPs I want pretty much anyway. So... I'm not putting too much emphasis on those victory points. In any way, it's more to show people, just sort of showcase the game with the updates and everything, what you can do with it, and then to help people out, basically, rather than going out for the victory. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to bring up my columns, who are going to have to just try and batter a bit of a hole in the line. Uh, I can come south. Now the problem, you've got to be a little bit careful because if I start pushing columns through line formation, there's going to be quite a lot of disruption. Whereas before, I said, oh, I don't mind disrupted troops because you know they can sort themselves out. I want them to fight now. I want them to be front line. I can't afford them to be disrupted. So you've got to be. Oh, I've got to be a little bit more savvy. Some skirmishes there. What happened there? I can't remember. Told you, memory's getting terrible. Um, or I didn't pay attention, one of the two. Um, you've got to be a little bit savvy, I guess, like I said, of of, of moving them through um, and then having a look at terrain, etc. So, if I was to do that now, towns always are a little bit messy. They're in line, has fired. I think the next time then, I'll put them in column and march on, if the Russians let me. Dragoons line themselves up nicely for my lances again. It's almost like they want to be destroyed. They've given me a bit of space my side of the river. Good. Um, okay. Right. Let's start with artillery fire, I think. And see what I can and can't fire on. I think I missed a trick on the last one with that face in there. I don't know, they should be, yeah. That battery is now, oh, right, a, a human player, let's say. But the way, I, I kind of, what I was saying for him, giving the advice of you attack it from multiple directions, it, it's kind of worked out in my favour. That They're obviously still worried about maybe these lancers, for example, whereas I've got my cuirassier on the. Um, on the flank of this battery, plus supplies, plus a leader, and if he's with artillery, 
that could be their commander. Um, I've sort of set it up quite nicely, if I do say so myself, that um, just to make sure that uh, they're disordered, although they will join the attack, just to give a bit of emphasis, a uh, bit of oomph, a bit of numbers. So I think we override, yeah, we did. We overrode that battery as far as I can see. Good. Uh, a lot of fresh line troops there. Ought to batter them up a little bit. Not just go in all guns blazing, or all horses blazing. Um, I ought to really give them a little bit of a paste in first. Oh, so that's very, mm, it's a bit lonely out there. And as I said, oh, they're disordered. Chasseau Cheval, yes. Lonely squadron. Behind. Ah, no prediction, eh? And a squadron of lances in the front. Yeah, it'll be all mixed up afterwards and stuff, but we'll be able to sort that out. Um, oh, I tell you what, I'm just going to pick at them as well without a charge. Just to try and get rid of them. They've been decimated. It's been quite a fun little sort of game within a game. And you often get that, and especially in big battles, with a sort of a mini battle here, mini battle there. And what have we got here? No, nope. I'm not going to risk it. What on earth must the Russians be thinking now if they see this lot? On their flank. Now, I am going to charge with some lances because there's an awful lot of skirmishers. I know with that battery's gone. And you've got to be careful the order in which sometimes you do these things because if I had charged before with that battery still there, charge these uh, uh, skirmishers, then those skirmishers, um, sorry, that battery would have, would have taken quite a lot. Of my lovely lances so you've got to be a little bit savvy about the order in which you sort of resolve some of your combat sometimes the uh, there is now a, a phased melee not not individual phases for the whole game but you do all your movement and what have you line up all your charges and there's an individual melee phase so you move 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 fire and then resolve your melees afterwards it's not bad it's not bad um it can lead to a more historical play for sure um but it does add a little bit of time um and I got into this horrible habit of sometimes forgetting where I'd line stuff up and, and not going through the next stack, etc. Right. They're still in square, so we can't really do much about that. Give them another blast with their horse artillery. You are now in the way. You are now out of the way. Hmm. Okay. And my poles are finally going to get to the other side of the river, Port poles, Portuguese, should I say, to the other side of the river, and I guess, I guess, all-out attack? Yeah, sound the advance, I guess. We're only a couple of turns left, not much left on the video. Um... Bring the artillery with them, helping to select them. Bring the artillery with them so they've got something on the other side. Come in there, break them down into column. Break these guys down into column. We've got some routed Russians, attach bayonet. And send them flying. Column, skirmish line up. Uh, the other thing is with skirmish line like that, um, it can draw, depending on the optional rules you've got, um, opportunity fire. So that the opportunity fire tends to go on the skirmishers. It's not realistic. I mean, you wouldn't fire volleys and volleys and volleys and lots of ammunition from your artillery at them. So I play, we, well, our little collective play with it off, the opportunity fire against skirmishers off. Put you in here. Select. There we go. There we go. 
Um, I think I'll leave my line troops in a little defensive position just to be 100% sure. I don't think they're going to push me back, but you never know. Just to be sure. I don't need to use every single stack just because I can. It's only if I need to. Uh, what I want is line of sight. I want this horse artillery. Got some routed troops there. Nice juicy targets. Some horse artillery here. I don't think. Judging by how many turns are left, I don't know if I'll need any of my reserve cavalry, light cavalry here. So, to save you a little bit of time, I guess, I'm going to sort of keep them where they are. But let's say that the battle was longer, bigger, part of a, a, a bigger picture. I would have brought them here and maybe somewhere here or get them on the road and down here, etc. Uh, the other cavalry, as I mentioned, come out here, maybe come round and then who knows. Uh, but just because I've got them, as I said, plus the main army would arrive and yeah, we're just looking at what we got in the field. Got a couple of routed units back here. And you are first brigade and second brigade. And we'll sort them out as much as we can. Not that we need to. Again, probably just wasting time. Um, but yeah, get your leaders in there and it will sort of sort them out a bit. Sort of thought it might be. Arm up. So a general advance, just for the, more or less for the sake of it, just so you can all see what's sort of going on. Um, we've got heavy cavalry nicely lined up for the next time. We've got some supply there. Can we continue our charge? We can. Disordered unit. Ah, okay. Yeah, I see what I've done. There we go. So I couldn't go there because one... One unit had charged, successful, they can continue. But then uh, the other Carassier unit, I brought them in, but they were disordered just to bulk up the numbers, and they had used up their melee for that battery. That's why that happened there. Lance is here. Also, see some more skirmishers. Um, no, no. They're disordered. They're fine. I, I don't know if this, I might be wrong, but I, I just think less in a stack, the more chance there is of sorting out disorderment. I might be completely wrong, but in my head, that's just how it happens, but I might be completely wrong. Uh, and then flip them around, pretty much surrounded them. Uh, and I'm happy with that. What would be nice is I could get a mass charge going over here. That would be nice. And that's what I was aiming for. And let's see if we can't do it. We might be able to, we might not. All depends on what they do. Square that. All right, I'm going to do sort of flanks and stuff before we get into the bit of a, a mess that is city fighting and, and that cluster mess down there. So I think what we'll do then is have a look up here. Everything's okay. I mean, this heavy cavalry, I, I feel like I'm, I'm marching it for the sake of marching it. Um, and on the same premise... The, that we had before where my reserve cavalry is there any point in doing all that I feel like to shorten the video a little bit but I would in, in real life against somebody else let's say have continued marching them up there to that lovely cavalry ground possibly some light troops down here I'm just going to save a little bit of time by not doing that but my intention would be there and that's what I would do in a, a, um, a serious game let's say well, what have we got here then well, I need to clear some of the cavalry that was used a second ago. Need to push forward here. Did we break that square? Did we heck? It's still going strong. Squares are impervious. Um, 
pull back units that have charged. The Bone Dragoons are gone, disappeared. Where have they disappeared to? Good question. All right, those that won victory points there, you've got one, got two, three now. Um, Carassier, come back down. Ah, there they are. Purely by coincidence, just bumped into them. Horse artillery, we'll give them a blast for good measure. Poor you got to feel sorry for them. Uh, Polish Lancers and Chasteau Cheval, sort my Polish Lancers out, you come back. Now, we've got retreating troops over here. We're going to use a squadron of Crassier, overrun them. Bring back my captured supplies. I'd rather have the Karasse back than the supplies. I've got plenty of supply. Uh, start skirmishing. And get my artillery on the go. Where else have I got some artillery? I thought I had three batteries there. Maybe not. Maybe I am imagining things. Uh, are they going to charge against that open ground there? It's going to use a lot. I'll tell you what, I'll do it for the video's sake. Maybe, again, if it was a more serious game, I wouldn't consider it, just so I've got the numbers and the time. Um, Carabinier. They are going to attack across that ground. Advantage Defender, because of that high ground. They're, they're charging uphill, essentially. However... If I send two more squadrons in, oh, they run out. Okay, Karassier. Ah, it's stacking rather than, yes, okay. Oh, still advantage defender. It's going to cause disruption. It's going to help out in the long run. I've got my reserves here, potentially, then... So, so if I bring everybody up, let's say, um, we still got a lot of cavalry that we can do a lot of damage with. So that, that's the plan. Lancers are going to come out of the heavy line and come over, do a bit of foraging over here. Uh, Lancers down here. Right, what else have we got? We've got square. That we can't really do much against because it's just a little impregnable castle. Soften it up a little bit more, maybe. We've got lancers. You're all going to come over here, make a bit of space. Come with the heavies. Sars, you're going to take the place of the lancers for any retreating troops. them forward and then I guess it's a case of using my infantry so um, where we got some artillery um, get line of sight see if I can see not many people not many so what I might do face them that way and give a long range blast down here Probably won't take many. Should have done that maybe before. Not that there was any effect to it though. Horse artillery here. Again. Line of sight on the marchers. Not the best place. Should have done this before, I know. And they got right. Now it's a case of pretty much attaching bayonets and then <laughs> seeing what we can can and can't do. Big old Russian battalion. So I've got to basically cross this river, and there's no easy way to do that. Sometimes you have to. 
do the dirty work. Uh, they are, they're facing the wrong way, that'd be why. Uh, again, I, I would spend more time on troop numbers, like we did at the beginning with commanders, with fatigue and everything like that. This is just <laughs> basically going through the motions and maybe seeing what we, we come up with at the end of it. So that's why I'm being a little bit less um, neat and tidy, let's say. I'm just trying to sort of push things through. And clear a bit of space because it is quite crowded in here. Offensive defender already attacked. However, you can come into the attack. There we go. Um, who want to send absolutely everybody in? We shall see. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to send absolutely everybody in. We need some some reserves. And that artillery is going to come over the bridge. Not allowed to make a crescent move. Ah, because they're on the bridge. Bring some supply up. Again, I don't think this cavalry is actually going to be used. However, if it was a longer game, I would start to bring them through to basically come out of the bridge here and, and join the other cavalry. That would be the, the master plan, the big scale plan, and, and the Russian uh, Prussian Hussars as well, moved like cavalry and so forth and so forth. So just clipping in a bit of time, there's a lot of more I would potentially do in this one, um, but just to save a bit of time, and, and I don't think I'll get it done within the turns anyway. Nothing on the flanks. Um, move these as well, I suppose, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right, uh, let's see what the Russians have got. Nice routed units there, which are quite nice, juicy target for those hussars. I mean, given the position they're in, I mean, their commander, I think it's an artillery uh, command, I can't remember who it is now. Um, I, I think they would just give up. I mean, you, you're completely surrounded. You have absolutely no chance of getting out of this. Um, in any, unless I've got some unknown Russians area, but that's why you've got scouts. That's why you've got scouts. So before I sort of jumped the gun, thinking, "Oh yeah, I've won the day." There could have been a, a big old Russian force somewhere around. I don't think there is. It's certainly not going to come into play in, in any major for uh, in any major way if there is. And they did have a lot of reinforcements here. So this time, which I should have done last time, I'm going to open up with my artillery fire where I can, and that's a lovely big juicy stack. Um, what we got here, and them, and here, and also on them. Can you see that hex? You can indeed. So, soften up where I can, who I can, and where I can. And then have a look at dealing with any units that are on the peripheries, let's say. So, Hussars have been waiting very patiently from the start. That's their chance. And they took up some Jaegers. So they'll be very happy. They'll celebrate and tell everybody they won the whole battle themselves and nobody else was involved. So, that's them done. Um, they're all sort of in good order, so I can't really do much with them. We've got artillery down here again. Soften up this big old stack that we've got here. Um, where's that horse artillery? Am I imagining stuff? I thought I had a few batteries here. There we go. Soften them up as much as possible. Now, I'm going to send in the infantry for this one, rather than the cavalry. And the reason being, because we normally play or the optional rules that there is a uh, I can't remember the word for it. You, you can continue to charge, basically. Multiple charges. Whereas there's 
only single melee allowed for infantry. If I was to charge with cavalry, that counts as a melee, and the infantry can then not go in with that rule. However, if the infantry go first, the cavalry can still follow up. So that's that rule explained. Um, and then let's resolve that. Push them off. See, now I can attack, uh, uh, charge with cavalry, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. If they've got the legs, they do indeed. And I'm going to make sure of this one. And we'll see what we get. Oof, lovely. Very happy with that one. Um, Hussars could potentially charge, but they're not going to. We do hail a bit of a mess. <laughs> Karasi. Oh, the Dragoons. I feel like this is going to be the last stand if we can sort of time it and get into a position. Have a look at those, make sure there's nothing. Yeah, if we can get into a nice position, though, I feel like it's... And they don't go into that bloody town, or that little village. Then it could be the last stand of the Russian Dragoons. it would be a lovely painting. They'd write about it for years. Because they, they... Well, no, they haven't really done much of a... <laughs> But they've been brave. They, they've. Uh, I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah, they are blown for sure. And then they think, oh well, yeah, we could just got rid of the Karasi. Eh? And what's this over the hill? A load of lancers. Um, over there as well. Poor dragoons. Right, what else have we got? Uh, right, well, it's all going to be infantry fighting from here on in. You're, no prediction. You're pretty blown, but SR20 needs to go in and push these pesky Russians out. Across the river, advances defend, that's fine. We'll bring in another 600 Roger. Ooh, that bounced off. Um, what can I see if I remember? In the marsh? No, not allowed in the marsh. Oh, advantage defender. So this is the square. And this takes a lot of doing. Breaking the square. See, no prediction. What have they got in there? Okay, fair enough. That was heavy. That was a heavy one. Well, we finally managed to dislodge that square. Bring infantry down. Okay, commander comes back. Skirmishes come across. You can come across. Line troops can break up. And join in. We've got supply. Skirmish has come up. Uh, have fired, that's why. Sort this cavalry out for potentially the aftermath of any of the infantry attacks we made. Um, facing that way. Over here. Here and up. Okay, get the supplies out of the way. Um, what else have we got? Come back. Hussars. Hussars are there as well. Ah. Uh -uh. Little rogue squadron. Should have been paying more attention. Um, we can move them down. Okay. Well, let's see what that did.
Yeah, I don't think they got much chance just looking at this, thinking ahead. But they might still get a victory because of the victory points. But as I said, I'm playing more historically rather than sort of for the game and stuff like that. So, oh, lost some leaders. Essarts, he was a bit of a hero there, led from the front. Um, what can you do? And then the very famous uh, Napoleonic family, anonymous family. They were time coach, they fought for every fight, but you will see them on every battlefield at some point. Uh, and sometime the lesser known, Phantom family. Right. Right, artillery first then. Soften up anybody I can. Which is getting a little bit more increasingly unlikely given that I'm just advancing without some artillery, basically. Um, there we go. I have to turn them round so I can't fire this turn. Force artillery. Can you fire on them? I can. Dragoons. Oh god. <laughs> um we'll over them. I'll sort these dragoons out first and see what we can and can do. Polish lancers are about the only thing I've got that's in a position to charge. And uh, see what we can't do. Push them out of the way. Into the path. Some more lancers. Into the path of fresh line lancers. <laughs> Poor guys. Poor guys. And that's then. I think by the look of it. Yeah. That's then. The end of those bloody dragoons. Anyway, what else have we got up here? We've got some artillery up here somewhere. What can they see? Some troops that are running away. Um, okay, so you're fairly fresh. Try and advantage defender. Um, I'll bring some line to even though they're disordered. Into the attack numbers, advantage defender still. Ah, that's why. That was why. Supplies out of the way. Right, what have we got for our cavalry? Yep, yeah, we'll take that. So, it looks like I'm being a bit more <laughs> rash with my cavalry than I, uh, I said before um, when you've got to be methodical, careful, which I still am with the facings and everything. But this kind of opportunity is exactly what I was saying in the beginning when I was explaining about cavalry, especially with heavy cavalry. It caused chaos in there. We've broken their line, and now we've got little pockets of um, disrupted units, routed units, and things like that. This is a field day for the cavalry, and exactly what you should be doing, especially with your heavy cavalry. So whilst it might be, seem a bit chaotic, and hang on, he said in the beginning, be nice and methodical, it is, it's organized chaos, trust me, it is organized chaos. So they're going to charge, advantage attacker, uh, Hussars are you going to come back? Um, who else can join in this one? Um, we'll take Beaumont and some fresh Karatier. Okay, and straight into the path. You've got to imagine that this is actually happening all sort of simultaneously. That that <laughs> it's not always in real life that everybody just stops, waits for something to happen. There. All right, you go. That would have been you know two squadrons attacking from behind, the units running away to be met by the other one. So it is happening simultaneously. You've got to sort of think a little bit like that with these games. Sometimes fifteen minute turn, don't forget. So there's a lot that will happen, but it's just because of the, the engine or the, the nature of the game, hexing uh, counter games, that that happens. So we resolve that. Oof, not much left of them. Got some routed units there. No protection. Must be a big old unit. Um, they're blown, but they're not too bad. Carry on. Nope. 
charge them, could charge some skirmishers and a leader. See, anonymous on the other side as well. And the Hussars, they, they can't help themselves. They are almost at Moscow, they're going to tell everybody. And there we go. Our advantage attacker. Not worth our stances coming over. I suppose I better go for these victory points. Um, now, it's not that I'm being lazy with a lot of units, it's just that I don't think they're going to be able to do anything now for the rest of the game. It's all about sort of around Krasny itself. So I'm only really going to concentrate, whereas I keep saying it in a big picture and what have you, I would be doing something with those other peripheral troops on the north, those heavy troops, uh, cavalry in the south, pushing east and seeing what's what. However, the video will probably be about another four hours long if we're not careful. So, gay commanders, what are they? Second brigade, so, Morion. Come on. Push forward with the infantry. They could be, <coughs> excuse me, could be in danger of becoming isolated if we're not careful. I think we'll have enough to break through. One attacker, eighteen defender, and right, move some heavy cavalry around. We're ready for the next charge. And. Saw this mess up from before. So bring those troops out, ready for another charge, maybe this time. Oh, leader. I think that was, yeah, I think Colonel Rapuchkin was the commander of the day. Sintel, yeah. Uh, info, leader, casualties, how many VPs? 49 for him. Yeah, I would say. We got the head honcho, so I would say that we pretty much came over in reality for them. But I, the Russians, they will fight to the last man for sure. And I will just accelerate it. We're coming to the end now, to be honest. And it's just... You've pretty much seen everything. Now it's just going to be mopping up and, and polishing off the, um, all the rest of them. Apart from that big stack that's a little bit concerning. A thousand men sort of coming down there. Um, yeah, we've got there. Advantage attacker. You might as well get in on the act as well. Not even doing artillery now. So, I think personally, I will call it a day there. What I will do quickly is, or just before the end, we'll see what we get in terms of if it's a victory or not. I will try and push forward as much as I can for those victory locations, but we've only got a turn or two, and I'll call it a day. I mean, that's a victory all day long. If we have a look at um, casualties, leader casualties, uh, they got a decision, but the Beaumont went as well, but I got their head honcho. So, and if we look at Casualties, lost 800 infantry, 260 odd cavalry. I lost one gun and two leaders. They lost 3,000, which is double what they actually lost in the day. They lost a lot of cavalry, 12 guns, a lot of supply, and a colonel. So that's, to me, a victory all day long. All right, so I think I will actually just leave it there full stop. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know if there's anything you would have done differently, any questions that you have. Um, there will be a lot more content coming. I'm, I'm filming a company level Waterloo, which is taking just ages. Um, I started it and not regretting it yet. Um, we got our Waterloo campaign, but we're, we're not going to be filming that one, as I said. Um, a couple of other things in the pipeline. There'll be another one of 
uh, these playthrough with our house rules just to explain where we're at with the house rules but that's going to be in a little while whilst we sort of finalize <laughs> and debate again <laughs> the house rules and yeah there's gonna be a lot more content so look out um, also it's worth mentioning about the raffle thanks to everyone who's entered but don't forget that you need not just to say I want this I, you need to say something that's nice that's happened this year something that has brought you a little bit of happiness a bit of cheer and we'll put you in the raffle. Please put, if you want a WDS game or if you want the tabletop game as well, and um, we'll do that raffle and I'll put it on the page and the winners can contact me with what they want, where they live and all this, that, the other. And um, yeah, there we go. The counter mod, I just want to fine tune it. I've noticed a couple of little mistakes playing through. I had to do a playthrough with them just to see alignments and things like that. So if anybody's interested, um, they'll be on the desktop Grenadiers Facebook page. And um, our house rules, they'll be through next year sometime. We need to sort of get through a lot of Belgium first, uh, as with the courier system as well. There we go then. So that video, as I said, you, hopefully you enjoyed it. But it was aimed for people that are fairly new to the system or just picked up a, a, a title in the sale. And I recommend that you pick up this title, A, because it's one of the, the, the better titles. That's a very common question. Uh, which one do I buy and why? Uh, Russia should be up there. It's definitely sort of a, a top three, top four game within the Napoleonic titles. Um, it's the next one to get a lick of paint. Not that it needs much of a lick of paint, but there we go. It's going to get that fantastic new artwork by Mitchell Nolte, as I said. Um, PDT changes for the series are forthcoming, probably, as I mentioned, Easter, late Easter sort of time there. A uh, big thing to note is there's, they're going to give pretty much um, all their attention to 15 minute turns, which is, I, I think, a good thing. Other little bits there, like uh, they're looking at uh, leaders, as I mentioned before, um, having different ratings and things like that, pathfinding. There's a few little bits um, under the hood that they're going to have a look at, but obviously, you know, a few months off things could change since I've said all this but they are looking at as they always do for every single title they have in every single series um, they don't just put it out there and then say right that's what you've got they do listen they do read and they do as much as they can to to improve their game so you know as I, uh, again thank you Rich and thank you to the guys over at WDS and the last little bit just to sort of recap where this video and what it was sort of aimed for then after all that three hours of watching this and falling asleep and waking up listening to my voice if you get a, a, this title and you haven't played it and you come across this video or you're not sure and then you buy it after the video and you've still got time for the sale uh it, the first thing to do is read that manual the all the documentation you get with each of the games across the series across the uh entire catalog of games they've got is fantastic it tells you what every single button press does what every single menu is what every click is they've been refined over 20 if not more, 20 odd years so the the manuals are you have to read the compulsory reading okay there is a fairly steep learning curve but you do the groundwork you read a little bit into it and you read the manuals then it will start to click everything will make sense get moving troops put a scenario on do the get starting uh, the getting started scenario uh, and before long, you'll think, how did I not know that? It just becomes second nature. And you saw me, I still make mistakes, mainly by being lazy. But I still make mistakes, um, moving troops around and mainly and things like that. Do a little bit of research, get a bit of context and get a little bit more invested, especially the bigger scenarios, the bigger games. Start small, work your way up, and before you know it, you're like, oh, I, I want to do the Battle of Borodino, um, which is a big undertaking, and that's certainly one you could maybe not the best example but you can't just move units around you need to do a bit of research why was napoleon there they took the redoubts then a couple of days of the truce then a couple of days later there the battle and all the units involved just do that little bit of research that little bit of context don't rush in study the field do your planning um that might just be a cursory glance if nothing else but you might get a little bit more detailed into it especially on those bigger one map campaign games or the bigger battles and things that will approach the battle scenarios and things like that the game will reward, for the most part, historical players. So if you're a, what I call a gamer gamer, and you think it's a RTS, Call of Duty, or whatever type game, and you just chuck in stacks of infantry, stuck in stacks of this and that and the other, you're going to get found out very quickly, and you're going to fail epically. The other way that rewards historical players is by game satisfaction, I'll say something like that. 
our little collective that we have uh, a couple of guys that we always play each other we play very much in the same mindset yes we've got our little house rules here and there to sort of but we play historically and we get satisfaction out of it none of us care about winning per se we just care about sort of sticking to history uh fighting as they were fighting back in the day um and that's how we get the most enjoyment out of it you get a hell of a lot of mileage out of these games um as what they do with any of the the panzer campaigns or whatever if you need to and you're not sure reach out for advice what you'll find is over on our page and the actual official wds page um as well as the computer strategy game and historical wargaming pages etc everybody is willing to give you a little bit of advice and their opinion and what have you and help you out there's no such thing as a stupid question or any stupid answer so don't feel afraid or don't be afraid should I say to reach out for advice and lastly whilst we've sort of said <laughs> uh, I went into sort of a lot of detail and depth perhaps just at the end of the day enjoy it and have fun if you want to throw all your stacks and units and everything at other stacks of units and you have fun doing it happy days mate each to their own and the final thing is to try multiplayer now multiplayer these games are a different beast they come in absolutely into their own and it's almost like it's uh in a way it's a completely separate game going against another human after you play the AI a few, a, 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 a few times is an eye opener and for the first time you might get absolutely trounced by someone but when you find a little collective a little group of people that you play all the time and you're like-minded it's probably the most fun you can have personally for me on my pc um that's about it gents join us at desktop grenadiers on the facebook um join the wds page as well there is a raffle there for any new people find it scroll down and as i said look out for more content stay safe in 2023 have a nice time don't get too drunk if you drink comments would be nice either on the page on the video if there's any videos you'd like to see if there's any questions all of that palaver put it down in the comments put it in the group thank you very much for watching see you on the next one